Hello everybody, welcome back. Yes, I'm back with a late night East Coast and an evening West Coast update. Uh, much of my audience is on today, uh, on Sundays, uh, right around this time. So I'm hoping you're catching this. I didn't post any videos today because it was a holiday for myself and my family and it was important to us to all spend the, spend the day together. Uh, so I wish you all the best. I wish you all had a wonderful holiday if you do celebrate or I wish you just had a, a wonderful weekend. Um, so I'd like to bring on some more announcements on the EIDL targeted advanced grants, the declines that are being shared. Uh, many of you, thank you so much for coming forward on this channel uh, to share with us your experience. And thank you so much for finding me on Instagram. You could catch me in the description if you'd like to find me on Instagram and you'd like to share some of the information. Um, I spoke to many of you, so thank you so much for uh, sharing everything you uh, uh, helped us with here today to make this video because I'd like to share some of this info with the rest of my viewers so that uh, we could help them advance uh, and help them avoid being declined uh, in this process. So let's get everybody caught up. Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Edward Builder. To all my loyal subscribers out there, welcome back for another video. And if you're joining me for the first time today, welcome. Consider becoming a subscriber. I'm a bit, uh, it's a bit late night in the evening here and uh, it was a very long day, I cooked a big dinner. Um, so I'm gonna try and get through this as unedited as possible. Um, it's gonna, we're gonna talk about a controversial topic here because uh, this is around the targeted advanced grants. Many of the viewers right here on this channel are reporting that they're being declined for necessary reasons that everybody feels is a bit unfair. And uh, we need to make sure that everybody's voices are heard and questions are answered because this may require um, us to have to reach out to our congressmen and women to help support us and get uh, some changes to occur at the SBA. Um, so this is around the $10,000 uh, $10, balance of the targeted advanced grant. So if you received if you received an advanced grant or were in the queue for an advanced grant prior to December 27th of 2020, uh, this is everybody that's eligible in a low-income community, suffered a 30% reduction in gross receipts and has 300 or fewer employees. Um, that's This is primarily who who this message is for. Now, priorities one and two, priorities one is everybody who received a grant, $1,000 or up to $9,000 and is now waiting for the balance. You means you received some kind of fund. That is priority one. And priority two, many of you are starting to receive your emails as we speak, which is an invitation to the portal. It's coming from targetedadvance at sba.gov. Watch for an email that should come to you uh, with an invitation to go into the portal and apply. Now, I urge you before you go into the uh, into the application process to make sure that uh, you follow some of the things that we're talking about right here on this channel because you're going to you're going to want to avoid some really critical mistakes that are really simple to do. Um, bank account information, keystrokes, super simple things that you could possibly make a mistake on without even realizing you're making a mistake. And before you know it. Um, you, you may believe that you're being advanced to be approved for the target advanced grant to suddenly be declined. And I also don't want to see you get the declined now because for many of the viewers who also suffered a 50% reduction in gross receipts would be eligible for an additional $5,000 supplemental grant that just came out in the last act. So I don't want you to, to lose the opportunity on the $10,000 balance and the $5,000 balance by making a very simple mistake. So stick with us here. Now, some of the other things that are happening are not necessarily the mistakes, okay? It's a complete oversight by the SBA, and we're gonna talk about that here in a minute. Um, so let me just talk about some of the backstory. Um, there are contractors that have been hired by the SBA by the hundreds, by the thousands, exactly what that number is. I haven't seen the data yet, but I am digging to try and find that data to find out how many contractors have been hired uh, but essentially, these contractors have been issued cell phones and email addresses that have been assigned by the SBA. It's a 202 area code uh, or possibly a 1-800 from El Paso, Texas, um, because a contractor may call you after you've submitted your application um, or they may email you requesting additional information in which they'd like to see your driver's license, verify the last four digits of your social, and ask a few additional questions to verify some form of identity like something that might be on your credit report, like a loan amount on a, a vehicle or on a mortgage, etc. And they're just basically trying to verify 
that you are uh, a, a real identity, a real person or a real entity that should be receiving the balance of the $10,000. Now they have asked other questions like, um, can you send us some kind of uh, certification that you are the authorized body to, that you know sits on, over your LLC, that you're the authority of it? So they have asked questions like that as well. Uh, but it's not really a scary phone call. It's just a phone call. Uh, but many of you are missing the phone call because you don't necessarily want to answer some random 202 or 1-800 number from, from El Paso, Texas. Uh, so make sure you're checking your emails. Make sure you're checking your spam. Okay, many of these emails are going and being directed into spam, including the invitation to the portals being directed into spam. I posted a video here uh, just, uh, oh, I guess it was mid last week because the SBA actually found me on Instagram to reach out to me to tell all of my viewers that many people are missing the email because it's sitting in their spam, right? And as they call in, this person will walk them through their spam and find their email. And thank you to everybody who reached out to me on Instagram and thank you to everybody who reached out to me on the channel here to say that yes, you actually found your targeted advanced grant invitation sitting in your spam and you never knew it was there and you've been waiting for it. So uh, you could simply check your spam and you could also uh, run the email hack. I have a video here titled email hack. It's I did not get my email. Just follow the steps here, five steps, and it'll, it'll get you into the, the queue to get your email. You're going to get a, a bogus email back that you know, tells you to leave them alone pretty much or do all these other steps. But after two or three days, you'll get the invitation to the targeted advanced grant portal. All right. So, But <laughs> it's very important that before you start to fill out anything on that, on that uh, invitation and hit the submit button that you uh, really, really listen to the rest of this video. Uh, because many people are being declined, unfortunately. Now, I mean, many people are being approved too, so celebration is still in order. So there are many people that are being approved, and thank you to everybody who told me here on this channel. But many people, unfortunately, are being declined. Uh, some are, some could be fair reasons why they're being declined, and, and some others are unfair. So let's get into the details. Okay, so the big question, have you been denied your uh, targeted advance grant? Have you been declined? You applied and you got either a phone call or an email that you've been declined for some various reasons. Now, many of the reasons are bank account information is not matching. I think that's, I want to say that's like a bit fair because they did tell you this in advance. Um, so it is very important, and if you read the email that they sent, it's very important that your name on the account matches. It has to match all your tax information. It has to match all the addresses. And you cannot have a personal savings account uh, being used for this application process and you must have the name registered to yourself it can't be registered to your friend you can't have the money go to your friend's account or your mom's or your dad's or your brother's it has to go to your account or the account that the account that is registered for your business and every, all the data has to align it seems like that's going through an automation a computer that's just going to check all of that information and if something doesn't match boom it's being shot out as a decline so i'd be very careful before you hit submit that all of your data aligns okay now some people are being declined for not having the 30 percent reduction in gross receipts it may be possible that they didn't have it you could uh, follow my uh, gross receipts step by step right here if you want to learn how to uh, calculate your reduction in gross receipts because it has to be a consecutive eight week period from March the 2nd up into uh, December 17th of 2020. So follow that follow that video if you'd like to hear more about that. Um, now, I am seeing that people are being declined, and thank you to everybody who reached out to me on my Instagram and here on the channel. I spoke to several people, like probably 40 people in the last two or three days that have been declined, and they very clearly, very clearly have 50% reduction in gross receipts, 60% reduction in gross receipts. They've had several months that they just had zeros because they had a government shutdown completely removed from the, to, to, the business was closed for that, that period of time. And they had zeros. But because they had several months in a row where they had zeros, it's just throwing the formula off. It's really bad. It's really bad. The formula that they're using to calculate this is just terrible. All right. So I urge everybody, if they get a phone call, if you get a phone call from one of these contractors and they tell you your decline based on the fact you did not have a 30% reduction in gross receipts, I would say, what was the formula you used? 
Can you tell me what formula you used? Send me some piece of information that shows me the math behind what you did. Get it on, get it on record, get it on file. I don't think you're going to get anything because these contractors are just answering questions and, and they really, they really don't have answers to, to the questions that are being asked. They, they've had very little training and uh, they're just responding back. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. You're declined. That's it. Sorry. Sorry. You're declined. <laughs> That's, can I, can I file for reconsideration? No, there's no, there's no appeals or overturning it. So I'm trying to get somebody with some concrete evidence that says, Oh, here's how we calculated it right here. This is what we did. We added, we added these months, these months, uh, you know, took the percentage, took the percentage from the year before. And if it dropped 30%, yeah, then, then you, uh, qualify. All right. Uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think that this is being done by an automation. I think this is being done by per individual, per application. And because of that reason, and because of the lack of training, I think they're being declined at no fault of their own. I think they had 30% reduction in gross receipts and that person just didn't know how to do the math. That's, that's my personal opinion. Um, so I'd like to know from everybody out there, if you get declined over this reason, ask why and comment on the channel and let us know what that reason was. Let us know if they gave you any, any indication of the formula and find me on Instagram. We can talk about it because I'd like to reveal it to everybody here. All right. So unverifiable information is a huge, huge, huge oversight, massive oversight. People are being declined because of the 2019 2020 tax backlog that's at the IRS. That means if you filed in 2020 your taxes for 2019, they have not been fully processed by the IRS to the tune of about 24 million applications. This includes 12 million paper, 12 million electronic. I've been checking on reports on this. And this is the prime this is the primary reason why they extended to May 17th. So your transcripts will show up at the SBA with all zeros. And in some cases, the SBA pulls it twice. They pull it a second time and it comes a second time with all zeros. And then they just say declined. That's it, declined. Now, if you did not file your 2019 taxes, I may see, uh, I may see a possibility that you, that you could be declined because they're trying to verify your information. But there's been thousands uh, that have filed their 2019 taxes that are being declined as a result of the backlog at no fault of their own. This is a huge oversight, huge oversight. So this is going to require us to alert, alert all of our congressmen and congresswomen, alert Ben Cardin, that uh, something needs to be changed here. It's going to require an act of Congress. Now, uh, what's interesting is that I've had some people message me on Instagram and they've proven to me, they've pulled their own tax transcript and it came back with actual valid data and they were declined from the reason that the taxes came back empty and they also got the same declined. So how does that match? That doesn't line up at all, right? That doesn't line up at all. Now, there might be a possibility that due to some timing that the first one came back blank, but you know, people are checking now on their own and seeing there's the data. It all matches my 2019 taxes and you still declined me. And they've even tried to say, I, I pulled it myself. Can I just send it to you? Can I fax it to you? And they said, nope, once you've been declined, it's over with. Move on. So massive oversight here. Uh, so as we gather more information, everybody, please report into the channel here, report into my Instagram. Keep bringing us the information because it will help thousands out there to avoid being declined and will help support this movement that we have to alert our congressmen and women of this of this uh, oversight. This is just a massive oversight. So keep the comments coming. I appreciate each and every one of you. All right, just remember there are things that you can do. Um, and you know, if you like this, uh, if you like this content I'm putting together for you, hit me a solid and smash the like button uh, because this message needs to be shared with thousands, in fact, millions of people out there that are eligible for a targeted advance grant. So if you know somebody and they know somebody and they know somebody, share this video with them. Okay. Share this with five of your friends that you know that are uh, eligible for the targeted advanced grant so that they don't make a mistake. All right. Share this, share this video. Okay. All right. So there are some things that you can do um, to avoid having your uh, self decline for the IRS transcript not being there. And that is simply check it yourself first. Okay. I asked, I, I tell everybody to do this and I've asked people on my channel uh, on my Instagram to check it themselves. 
and they did check it and they did verify that the IRS did not have any uh, did not have it uh, completed it was still in backlog so you can check this yourself right and you could check this yourself and you could verify in the top corner of your uh, application for the targeted advanced grant you'll see an expiration date up there I believe it's five months I believe it's a five month expiration from the time at which they send it to you um, but that number's been varying so just just I think it's like five months all right but check your own expiration date it'll be in the top uh, top right corner it'll say expiration date some date right and um, before you go and send in your 4506T, this is to validate uh, a transcript from the IRS to the SBA to see if your 2019 taxes are complete and it matches the data, you're going to want to check yourself with the IRS to make sure it's done. And if it's not done, you're going to want to get on the phone each and every day and call the, call the IRS until you find out they've processed your, your uh, uh, tr uh, taxes from 2019. All right. Um, I'm not sure if they'll prioritize you because you're waiting on something in the SBA. But if you make a bunch of phone calls day after day after day, I think eventually they might start to push that forward. <laughs> so uh, I would keep on top of the IRS to get this thing processed. And as soon as you find out that they said, yep, you're good to go. And they give you the old smash of the thumbs up. Like, you know, you should go hit the like button right now. So as soon as they smash it and give you the thumbs up, um, they uh, I would then validate that i would go and check it again and don't check it the first day check it you know a day or two later to make sure that yes they are done and that your transcript is not showing up blank with blank information and then at that point submit into your targeted advanced grant the 4506t uh, so that you can avoid this denial letter that you know our transcripts aren't on, aren't on file and sorry it's not our fault right i think that's uh i think that's a bogus one um now Funds are, are limited for this. It, uh, the funds currently are $25 billion. There was an original $15 billion that came over in December of twenty of, of December 27th of 2020. That was the first $15 billion that came over. And then an additional $10 billion came over for the $10,000 grants for that shortfall. It, it was short. $15 billion wasn't enough. So they brought in another $10 billion, totaling $25 billion. Um, and then there is another five billion that's being pressed towards the five thousand dollar grants. That's completely separate from this this ten billion, ten thousand dollar grants. So twenty five billion over here, five billion over here for five thousand dollar grants. So I urge everybody to alert their Congress men and women of this huge oversight. This is a massive oversight. Um, alert them, let them know, let Ben Cardin know that uh, you know you've been denied at no fault of your own because the IRS transcripts are coming up blank because of the IRS backlog. And the SBA is telling you, sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't overturn the decision. This is gonna require an act of Congress to change this decision. It's like, it's like we're gonna to have to start all over again, practically all over again with the targeted advanced grant program. This is just insane to me, all right? This is insane to me. Um, so make sure you alert your congressmen and women of this, of this oversight. And remember, leaving your comments with me enrolls you into my next giveaway because when I hit 20,000 subscribers in the next few days, it's happening here pretty quickly. I'm going to be giving away $500 from picking a random comment from all of my subscribers from all of my videos. So you can comment all over the place. I'm going to pick a random one and send $500 out as soon as I hit 20,000 subscribers. So I thank you all so much for supporting the channel here. Remember, I'm always looking for new partners and investors in my B&Bs and my short-term rentals. I also have plenty of content and videos on B&Bs and short-term rentals. So hit the notification if you want to be alerted to when these videos come out. And if you've been fortunate enough to receive some of the stimulus money, get out there and start changing your future. You can check out in the description Webull, Blockify. I even have Robinhood up there, M1 Finance, a lot of the investing platforms. And they're all giving away free stocks. Uh, Webull is a pretty good uh, investment platform. I personally gain about $2,000 each month of free stocks by just recommending it to my friends on Facebook. I click two buttons, I recommend it to my friends on Facebook. When they sign up, I get a bunch of free stocks. Right now they're giving away 10 free stocks for every time you sign up two friends on Facebook. So that's pretty awesome. And some of the stocks could be valued up to, I mean, $1,800. I got one, I got some Facebook stocks for like $263. That was pretty awesome. So check out Webull in the description. You can check out Blockify if you wanna uh, secure cryptocurrencies. And if you need some further assistance outside my free content here, you could find me pinned in the top comment for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Schedule me for a phone call. 
I thank you all again, and I wish you all the best. I wish you had a happy holiday here today or just a happy weekend. Uh, the sun is starting to shine. So I wish you all the best, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye for now.